So we've gone as far as installing ESXi or hypervisor on physical hosts. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up our first virtual machine. So here we are back at our ESXi host client login screen. We're just gonna take a closer look at the ESXi host client screen in general. So the homepage um, shows you a little bit of information about the resources available on your host. So we've got our CPU, 28.8 gigahertz free, kind of a weird way to look at it, but okay. Essentially it's an eight core, uh, 16 thread Intel processor, uh, 32 gigs of RAM, we've got primary SSD and a secondary SSD that I don't believe has been set up yet. On this drop down menu here on the side, we've got host, which is where our primary screen is here under manage. Gets into a little bit more details about what's physically on the on the host. This is where you would go in and assign your licensing from your My VMware account. When you downloaded the ESXi ISO, there's a license key that's populated there. That will put you on the free tier. So for now, in evaluation mode, I believe it actually gives you all of the features of a vSphere Essentials Plus license bundle. So be careful when you go installing VMware. Some of those features may not be there after your evaluation time is up unless you purchase their licensing. So for now, we're just going to leave that blank. You can always go in and propagate your license key at a later time. The different services that are running in ESXi, security uh, information and data for different users. If you want to add multiple users besides your primary root admin user, you can essentially add multiple people and give them different roles to manage this on your behalf and you can actually create those roles. So you can add a role with full access for certain things and no access for other things. We're not really gonna get into that today. We're talking about virtual machines. The next menu down is monitor. So we can monitor our actual usage for compute, memory, the network, how much the network is using, and even disk. Monitor the different hardware that's out there. Depending on your host, sometimes they're unable to provide that for you. Coming down here to virtual machines, this this is where we would create our first VM. Before we do that, we need to set up the storage at where we're gonna store the data for this VM. So we're gonna come here to the storage dropdown. We can see we've got a single data store. That's created by default. That's on the SSD or the drive that you indicated when you installed your hypervisor. This is on our NVMe M.2 SSD. And we could use this just as is, where is, and fill it up with VM data, but we do have have a SATA drive in here as well. It's an SSD, it's a Samsung Evo. You can see here that it's got pretty much no data on it. It's it's completely blank. We went through and wiped this before we installed it onto the device. So there's no VMFS file partitions on the drive currently. Here's all we gotta do. Go to new data store, and we're going to name this data store two. We could go in and use the full disk, which is what we're gonna be doing, or we could customize it and use half the disk or something like that. VMFS six or five, I'm not sure of the difference. I'm just gonna use the, the newer generation. So we'll hit next there. It gives you all the information and we'll hit finish. Yes, everything is gonna be erased on there, which we already knew that. Boom, VMFS is now set up as a secondary data store. So if we go back here to storage, we can see that we've got our secondary data store here. Along the tabs at the top, we've got adapters, which the multiple adapters that are on my motherboard are the M.2 port that's built on the motherboard and the SATA ports that are also built on the motherboard. We could have a dedicated RAID controller or something like this that's got a whole bunch of SATA connectors on it as a storage controller. Uh, the next tab along the top shows the different devices that we have, Sierra NVMe and our SATA drive here. Jumping down from storage to networking. This can get pretty complicated and I'm not gonna go too deep into it today because this video is about virtual machines. So really we'll get into more details about VNets and virtual networks later on. But you can see along the top here as well, we've got our port groups, which by default VMware provides you a management 
management network and a VM network virtual switch. There's also a single virtual switch that's populated. The port groups with live, live within the virtual switch, which is mapped to your physical NIC. If you're putting this into just a desktop, the next tab here is physical NICs. You're probably just going to have a single port, just like I do. If you need more dedicated network ports, you can always get something like a dedicated four port NIC, but these are dirt cheap on eBay and you'll get you four, you know, gigabit ethernet ports. Anyway, I'm getting too deep down this freaking rabbit hole. Your V kernel NICs, which again are tied to your port group, which are tied to your physical ports on the device. Um, TCP IP stacks and your firewall rule. We're just gonna go ahead and stand up our first virtual machine. Super easy. We're going to come here and go create slash register VM. Create a new virtual machine because we haven't created any before. We're not going to have an OVF or an OVA file to restore from. And we're not going to register an existing virtual machine because we don't have one. This is our first VM, remember. So we'll come down here to hit next, select the name, and we'll name this my first VM. Uh, ESXi VM guest OS. Now, depending on the operating system that you're going to be using here, we're going to use Windows. Depending on what you're using this for, again, and just like in most things IT, the answer is it depends. So depending on what you're using this for, you could use a full-blown Windows operating system, or you could use something that's like Tiny10, which is a version of Windows 10 LTSC or long-term service contract. LTSC used, used to be LTSB. Anyway, it's a very slimmed down bloatware free version of Windows 10 Pro uh, Enterprise, Windows 10 Enterprise. And it's super small. It's super fast as far as side by side with another VM. We're going to go ahead and hit next because we've hit Windows and our Windows 10. We're going to put this on data store one, which is our NVMe drive. Here's where we're going to customize our settings. Now, Windows typically needs four gigs of RAM minimum to run, right? So we're going to leave this pretty much all the same as our two CPU, our four gigs of RAM. I'm going to put a hundred gig hard drive on here. The Logic SAS controller, uh, we'll leave that alone as well. USB 3.1, that's fine. The CD drive, drop this down to the data store one. First things first, kind of skip this part, but I guess it's good that I did. When you get to this part, depending on where you want to put your images, your ISO files, is where you're going to put um, in the data store browser. So you can go where we've gone now to this point or under the storage menu. You know what, let's just go there. So under the storage tab here, we can come into data store browser and data store one's our NVMe, data store two is our SATA drive. So I'm gonna put these under data store one, we're gonna create directory and we're gonna name it ISO. And then under ISO, we highlight our new directory and we hit upload. This is going to be where we populate our different ISO images that we're gonna be using for our virtual machines. So for this one, I'm going to upload Tiny10 and you can see right over here that the file is uploading, it's got your percentage and all that stuff. Now we're gonna go download our Windows 10 ISO. So VMware's not going to have that for you. You have to provide your ISOs. I will have links down in the description below on where you can find all of this stuff that I'm talking about today. Uh, there's plenty of other videos on how to how to set that up. Anyway, you get your Windows 10 ISO. So we're we've got our Tiny 10 media installed. Back here, we're gonna upload our Win 10 ISO as well. While that's installing, um, we're gonna come back here. When we're installing our or creating our first VM, data store ISO file, hit browse. Under your ISO folder that you created, we're gonna do the tiny 10. Make sure that this little box here is checked because that's going to connect on power on, yeah. Uh, well, this connects the drive in general, but if you do a drop down here, you can see status connect at power on. So essentially it reads it as a virtual CD-ROM. Load your bootable ISO image. We're gonna hit next. This tells you all the information that you just put in and hit finish, boom. My first VM. I'm gonna go through and create a second one real quick. Now, if we click on my first VM, this is where we're at. It shows the virtual resources we have allocated to it, which we can change at any time, any time, by the way, if we absolutely need to. But first things we're gonna do is click the window. That's gonna open another window. Just like you're installing uh, media from a CD-ROM, you're gonna need to click a key in time for it to see there we go, boot from CD or DVD. 
And then simple as that, you go through the process of setting up your virtual machine, just like it's any other Windows machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for our first and our second VM and uh, we'll come back shortly the next day and we're back this is a good time to bring it back i've got our two vms side by side this one here is the traditional install of windows and you can see the cpu usage just now spiked up randomly couldn't install a feature ah that's why look at that so the my second vm is their traditional windows install and it looks like it installed something in the background because at the same time i got a pop-up on tiny 10 that said we're trying to install something and it failed which is interesting to see by you know side by side we can see that both of them are showing about one percent cpu utilization at idle with nothing really running but we can see that there are less processes running on tiny 10 than there are on traditional windows install just in general the bloatware free version it uses a lot less compute resources so for things like an example would be a dedicated virtual machine for crypto wallets if you've watched any of my videos you know that i mine crypto sometimes i speculatively mine crypto and i keep my wallets off of my main machines if i want to dedicate a vm that's outside of my daily driver setup here this is how i would do it i'd be using tiny 10 as a dedicated windows machine for each wallet cool thing is other than the storage allocation because that's statically allocated to the virtual machine so we could have virtual machines that are dedicated for each specific wallet not just one vm that has all your wallets on it that then you can just leave powered off until you go to interact with it and as long as you allocate enough storage so that the vm can run when it's up and running and you've got enough physical storage on your machine this is where additional drives come in handy so moving on here we can see that we can just go ahead and continue creating vms if we want to run a Ubuntu VM, we can just change our guest OS family. We can go down here to, but you can go do go through and do this same process for any VMs that you'd like, as any operating systems that you'd like as well. And yeah, like I said, the cool thing is if you've got a VM for different applications and different use cases, you don't have to have them all powered up and running at the same time and allow you to kind of grow with the server, so to speak, if that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section down there underneath that like button. There should be a box popping up around here somewhere that you can click on to go to the next video in this series. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. And of course, thanks for watching.